Qualcomm reporting second quarter earnings moments ago. For more on the results, we are now bringing in Kevin Cassidy, Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst at Rosenblatt Securities, and more insights and strategy founder and CEO and Chief Analyst Patrick Moorhead. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Patrick, I will start with you, my friend. Uh, look at Qualcomm. They reported uh, investors like this, at least initially. We're popping in the after hours, Patrick, but give me, give me the, the hot initial take here. Yeah, so the big uh, question was going to be around uh, handsets, right? We saw some puts and takes uh, between Qualcomm customers, right? <laughs> Apple is down, but China is up. I mean, China, first half 24, up 40% uh, for Qualcomm there. Big surprise. I, but the biggest surprise was automotive. Hmm. Huge increase, but even bigger was the fact that they went. They increased their backlog from fifty, from thirty billion dollars to forty-five billion dollars, up from eighteen months ago. That is pretty big. I'm wondering how much of that is ADAS versus the rest of the line. Hopefully, we'll hear on the call. Um, Patrick, let me follow up on that. I'll get to the automotive business in just a bit because that is a really interesting um, growth driver for the company now. But it is yeah. still about the handsets. We've seen, to your point an improvement in growth, at least in the Chinese market. Qualcomm very exposed on the back end of it as well. On the issue of AI, where what does the upgrade cycle look like right now for you? Yeah, so uh, we saw the first inklings of this with Samsung that did a little bit of on-chip AI and a lot of cloud AI, and we're seeing a lot of these same patterns in China. But with Qualcomm's new chips coming out that supersize this AI by putting a much larger dedicated AI chip, that combined with some upgrades to Android, I'm very optimistic in the second half of this year that we could very well see the beginning of a super cycle. And the same thing uh, on the PC side that Qualcomm has recently entered inside. Kevin, I want Kevin, I want to get you here as well with the stock up about three and a half percent here in the after hours. Your 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 initial reactions, Kevin. Yeah, this is about what we were expecting, and um, it's actually uh, you know a relief compared to what uh, Skyworks reported last night. Uh, Skyworks showed you know they had very high exposure to the iPhone, and uh, Skyworks showed that there was a weakening in demand in March and into April. So it's good news that the Android Android side uh, seems to be doing just fine. Um, Kevin, you know, we had our tech editor, Dan Halley, on set earlier talking about the integration of Gen AI in these devices. And he said, look, the hype is great, but I don't know how different how different uh, the user experience is right now with the smartphone. You heard Patrick say there's a super cycle later this year. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, it's actually the, our thesis for why we have uh, Qualcomm as our top uh, large cap name. And, uh, you know, I happen to have an S25 or 24 from Samsung. And, um, you know, it is, I, I traveled to Hong Kong, I traveled to Taipei, and I was able to do uh, language translate mm. on the phone, and it didn't even have to be connected to the internet. Uh, that was one that I thought was a great feature. Uh, but I find also they have features such as uh, powering down products that aren't being used, you know, where the phone is thinking ahead for you. And so I get uh, extremely good battery life with it. And I, I think there's going to be just a, uh, a whole bunch of more uh, more uh, applications being added. You know, even on the Qualcomm website, they list about 300 different um, models that you can use for, to develop uh, software that would run on their Qualcomm Snapdragon for smartphones. And Patrick, I want to bring you here uh, and talk a little bit more about China. And you mentioned some of the numbers we, we got here, Patrick. I'm just curious, you know, for Qualcomm investors who are listening right now, how should they think about China looking ahead for Qualcomm, just in terms of the risks and the opportunities, Patrick? Yeah, so the way that I characterize Qualcomm and China is that uh, they can benefit in, in nearly every high-end handset over there as long as it's not Huawei, right? Mm. Uh, with Apple down, you have companies like Xiaomi that are up and Qualcomm benefits. Now, <laughs> Qualcomm has content in Apple too, just not as much where in the high-end Chinese manufacturers, they have the applications processor uh, plus uh, the modem. But the great news though overall is China is up. People are buying smartphones again. And as we discussed a little bit, we're at the very beginning of this AI cycle. and. Just to add on the commentary of that, um, we haven't seen uh, yet, people are really stealthing the capabilities in the new operating systems. They don't want to talk about it yet because it's not ready. 
but it will be, and we're going to start seeing some much more exciting things toward the middle of this year. Uh, Kevin, let's talk about uh, the automotive business. Qualcomm, very much a company that is in transition right now. They've really pushed this narrative about diversification. The revenue coming in from the automotive business, $603 million, coming in stronger than expected. As you look to the mix for this company, how significant is the uh, uh, upside on the automotive side? And what does it look like? I mean, it, it, the core is still handsets. Are we talking 50-50? I mean, how do you see that revenue mix down the line? Well, the, the whole idea is that you're taking the smartphone and moving it onto the car. So your car is going to be connected, and I'm pretty sure that's where most of their revenue is. And, and even the display, their, uh, the, their Snapdragon can run the display, so it's just like your uh, smartphone would. Uh, then they have the uh, being able to move into ADAS, but um, I, I'm not sure how quickly that's going to uh, grow for them. But I think just having the connected car is a significant growth already. And then we'll just see how they move into the ADAS market from there. Patrick, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit. Uh, Apple, tomorrow, my friend, after the close, we know, we know there's been some worries here about the AI strategy, China, uh, regulatory scrutiny. What are you expecting tomorrow, Patrick, from the iPhone maker? Yeah, I'm expecting uh, some disappointment uh, out there for uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, China is a reduction, is, is a reality. We saw those numbers from IDC and Canalis, and I think we're going to see that uh, included. Mm -hmm. Part of that reduction is the lack of an AI offering. Now, Apple never needs to be first with much, and I don't think they need to be first with this AI smartphone. In fact, they're not first. It, it's been Samsung, but uh, they have this iPad launch where they're going to talk a little bit about M4, and then they're going to have to talk a little bit about the AI, and we're going to see the full unfolding at WWDC with Apple's AI strategy, which will be very much on device and I think is a strength for Apple as compared to where they are weak, which is in the cloud. Patrick, Kevin, great to see both you guys on the show today. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you.